I'd like to thank uh, the NEPC for the very kind invitation to this uh, extremely important and timely conference. And of course, the board and management of the NEPC must be commended also for the foresight to organize this event and, the, and for putting it together so expertly. I bring you also the very warm greetings of the president, President Mohammed Buhari. To all stakeholders here, uh, we see and salute your contributions to our ongoing drive to urgently and extensively unlock the full potential of our country's non-export economy. And there are so many of you here who have contributed to that, either as regulators or actual operators. The theme, Export for Survival, carries an urgency that perfectly frames the challenges that we will increasingly face if we do not accelerate the diversification of the Nigerian economy. But we understand and we fully appreciate the extensive impact that this will have on our people. And so we are committed to moving quickly and assuredly. Our considered response so far has been carried out in the light of, first, the dynamism of the Nigerian people and our multi-sectoral potential for innovation and productivity at scale. Second, the responsibility of government at all levels in leading the charge to unlocking this potential. And this involves not just the federal government, but the states also. We are on our way with respect to all of our commitments. The challenge facing our non-oil export economy should be viewed especially in the light of what has transpired in the last eight years. In 2021, Nigeria's non-oil revenue stood at about 1.15 trillion naira, which represented a growth then of about 4.75% in the fourth quarter especially, and a contribution of about 92.51% to the nation's overall GDP. So in actual fact, the non-oil ex non uh, economy has always contributed, uh, of course, significantly, the majority, if you like, or most to the uh, to our GDP. In 2019, the year preceding uh, COVID-19, non-oil revenue represented 92.68% of our total GDP. So there again, almost a, you know, almost a 1% increase. The growth following the year uh, indicates the growing resilience of our non-oil export sector. And it's very clear that we've also become even more, uh, even more uh, susceptible to growth as opposed to shocks. So it's, it's becoming evident now that we are more resilient. It's, we are more able to resist some of the international shocks. And you can see even today with, uh, the, with what is going on in uh, the supply chain, especially with the Ukrainian uh, invasion and all of that. You'll see that clearly, if we were not concentrating on local production, it would be extremely difficult to cope. And as you've heard you know, from the SGF, some of what we're doing, especially in, in the rice sector and in some other areas, especially in the crop sector, beyond these numbers that we see and we hear are human stories of bold visions and grit persistent innovation, and the unflagging spirit of Nigerians across the country who are building model companies and businesses hands deep in the plow. Some of our best stories, of course, are in the tech sector. In the last seven years, six tech companies have become unicorns, companies valued at over $1 billion each. And all of this, and all of this between two recessions. So it's evident that there is a lot that's going on. And one of the reasons why you'll find that the tech sector is growing so well is because I believe of the very light hand of the regulatory sector upon it. And this is one of the things that we must seek to achieve. We must seek to achieve a situation where regulators see themselves as facilitators of business as opposed to policemen or those who may just provide some obstacles. And this has been the focus. And, and this has been the focus of a lot of the work that the Ministry of uh, Industry, uh, Industry, Trade and Investment has focused on, especially with the MSME clinics, where we've tried to show that the very best approach 
is for regulators to see themselves as those that must promote business and that their success will be measured against the success of business. You know, and this is, uh, I think, one of the very important innovations that has been brought to bear through the MSME clinics. So our job as government is to assiduously uh, enable businesses, especially with regulatory policies and procedures and processes that are continuously optimized for greater efficiency and easing the flow of business across the sectors. And this must be coupled urgently with the supporting infrastructure needed to aid production, distribution, and export. Again, in this sector, we are certainly on the way. The core mandate of our Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council has recently found expression in the National Action Plan, which we call NAP 7.0, on the ease of doing business. And it is programmed to consolidate on the removal of regulatory constraints, especially around agro-exports, and to drive the electronic filing of taxes and publication of insolvency regulations, pursuant to the uh, Companies and Allied Matters Act 2020. So the NAP 7.0 Agro-Export Plan prioritizes port and trade facilitation reforms to minimize cross-border trade and transport logistics and for uh, Nigerian companies uh, to do better and to be more, uh, more compliant with the uh, AFCTA uh, export compliance regulations. These interventions that we are seeing are to be complemented by improved automation and we expect that this will be the case as when we bring in the national single window. The national single window has been long in coming, but th this is going to make a sea change, especially in uh, trade facilita facilitation and, of course, for exports uh, in, in that sector. And this, of course, is also in line with the trade facilitation agreements that we've signed with the World Trade Organization. The plan for reduction of cargo clearance time has also begun with the facilitation, through uh, uh, with the facilitation of um, the of, of uh, imports and exports, with the introduction of scanners, the installation of scanners supported also by the Port Community Portal. That also is a very important feature because one of the major problems and complaints that we have is that there is always physical inspection of goods as they come in or go out. But now with these scanners, we hope that physical inspection will be greatly reduced. And again, once we're able to fully implement the national single window, clearly we'll do a lot better in terms of reducing all of the obstacles uh, in, the way of, uh, in, in the way of exports. We also have extended, as you know, the Lagos Ibadan standard gauge rail to their papa ports. And this is very important because obviously it will lead to easier movement of goods and cargo out of the port area. And this is alongside the ongoing construction of the Apapa or Jota Expressway in Lagos, as well as other feeder roads, especially around the ports. We have continued to meet the challenges uh, facing us head on, and there are many challenges, but you must, uh, and I'm sure that all of us will agree, that the federal government's commitment uh, to infrastructure, and uh, to infrastructural development, and also uh, to looking for ways of funding uh, all, uh, especially uh, industry trade and investment, funding our exports, funding uh, uh, industry in every possible way, is, 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 one, is one commitment that we have taken very, very seriously indeed. Recently, of course, you've heard about uh, uh, the Infrastructure Corporation of Nigeria, Infraco which was launched in 2021 with an initial seed capital of one trillion naira. This is an urgent response, of course, to our infrastructure needs. Well, the infrastructure needs are great. We have almost $300 billion in infrastructural def deficit, but we must start somewhere. And our uh, Infraco is one of the very important ways by which we are starting that whole process. This follows an 8.9 trillion investment on infrastructure in the last five years. This is the largest infrastructure investment by any government, at least in the past 20 years or so. And this covers rail, roads, power, broadband connectivity, 
And all of that was sustained uh, and accelerated despite the interruptions and the downturn in the economy caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. But the effort of the government must succeed within the deliberate collaborative frameworks that allow for seamless cooperation between the public and private sector operators, government agencies, states, and of course, uh, all of our private sector partners in particular. This is why we are as optimistic about the opportunities presented by the African Free Trade Continental uh, Area Agreements, which we have thrown our full weight behind. We are determined to enhance the competitiveness of our businesses within what is poised to become one of the largest regional single markets in the world. And this is why our Export Development Fund, under the Nigeria Export Promotion Council, has committed 50 billion naira to help position the export-oriented Nigerian businesses to play competitively within this growing regional market by building programs as well as, uh, as business grants. And I think that uh, that fund is one that is not just innovative in the way that it's been set up, but in its implementation. I think the transparency of that of the implementation is one for which uh, the NEPC must be commended, and of course, uh, the, the minister. So our commitment to deepening our productive and export capacity in the coming months and years is also evidenced by the National Development Plan 2021, uh, 2021 to 2025. The strategic objectives of the National Development Plan show clearly where we're headed in terms of the non-oil export economy. And this includes the establishment of a strong foundation for a diversified economy, investing in critical infrastructure, enabling human capital development, and improving governance and strengthening security, all of which we expect will contribute significantly to achieving our national development aspirations. The cornerstone of the thinking around the plan is productivity. Productivity, we think, is really the way to go. We have to, we have to focus all our attention on being productive. Local investment is perhaps even more important than foreign investment. Once we enable the, 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 the environment for local investment, once we show that our sole focus will be on productivity, which of course, of course will also be the guiding principle for our regulatory agencies, that what we're interested in is productivity. It's productivity that will bring jobs. That's what will bring the income. That's what will bring the growth that we expect. And of course, that will conduce to export. So the focus of the, of the, of the plan, the cornerstone of the plan is productivity. And that will be the watchword of our, of our economy as we go forward. We're determined to accelerate our efforts through holistic stakeholder input, and this is why this conference is of immense value. The robust multi-sectoral representation that's here clearly underlines your well-considered appraisal of the wide spectrum of our non-oil sector value chain. And we trust that the deliberations here at this uh, conference will, and the vigorous exchanges which we expect to happen will yield practical and far-reaching recommendations which I hope will further reinvigorate the non-oil sector and the economy at large. We hope that in the coming uh, months and years, all of the effort which uh, has been put into uh, developing the non-oil sector will begin to yield uh, tangible, uh, will begin to yield really, really tangible results. And we expect that all our partners, especially the private sector, will, will see the plans and will see the plans as being genuine, as being uh, inspirational as we expect them to be, and will make, uh, our, make them even more committed to developing the, the Nigerian economy. Again, let me commend the, uh, the ministers of uh, industry, trade, and investment, both the minister and the own minister of state, for their visionary leadership of that uh, sector. And I think that they've done so well. I think they've done so well, uh, so well indeed, and we expect them to do even more. Thank you very much. God bless you.